Hello everybody, I am Marco Misenta, Staff Reservoir Simulation Engineer at CNG and I'd like to welcome you to this presentation on the subject of CO2 sequestration modeling using a new wizard developed by CMG for the 2021 release of the software. We know that uh, various physical and chemical mechanisms are responsible for the storage of CO2 in a geological formation. These mechanisms include structural trapping, residual gas trapping, solubility in water and mineralization effects due to geochemical reactions. The issue we want to address here is to how to incorporate all these uh, mechanisms effectively into a gen data set and enable the users to benefit from all the CO2 storage options built into the gen simulator. So for this scope, we have a new tool on the uh, 2021 version of uh, CMG's uh, preprocessor application builder. We can see this tool uh, here in the builder interface. It's under the components section of builder and the sub option called the uh, process wizard. With the 2021 version of builder, this option will uh, additionally include a carbon capture and storage wizard. And if we go to this specific wizards interface, which is represented on this last picture here, we can see the various options will be available for modeling. So CO2 solubility in uh, water, any geochemical related effect, hysteresis modeling. And along with these, uh, the water vaporization option is available as well to model water dry out effects in the near well bore region as well as the gem thermal option, which can be used in the context of CCS for predicting cooling effects due to Joule Thompson cooling around the injection well. So I'm going to demonstrate the use of this wizard in practice, which will also allow me to go into more detail into the various option. And um, to help me out with this, so I will be using a base case uh, gem model for an aquifer, which I've just opened in Builder. You can see that in this model, I've already defined a CO2 injector well defined at the bottom of the aquifer. And this model at the moment doesn't contain any trapping mechanism options for CO2. I'm going to add them all in using the uh, process wizard in a Builder 2021. So I'm going to navigate to the components section, process wizard. And from here I can access a number of wizards, uh, some of them already available in previous versions of CMG. And the new one, 2021 builder is the carbon capture and storage process, which is briefly described uh, on this uh, step one page of the wizard. We can move on to the next section where we are basically selecting the main mechanisms that we want to model. In this case, I'm just going to say that I will be selecting them all because I want to discuss them all. Solubility in uh, water will always be selected. As you can see in this version of the wizard, this option is selected and grayed out. So CO2 solubility is by default always activated as a possible trapping mechanism. And the default option in uh, the wizard is to model solubility by way of a correlation, which is based on Henry's law of uh, solubility of a gaseous component in water. I also want to say here that uh, additionally, with the 2021 version of GEM, we can model CO2 solubility by direct input of KV tables. In the second option, I can turn on the geochemistry modeling tool. And once I do that, I can select the activity model for the chemical species that will be uh, figuring in the geochemistry uh, setup of the model, which will be in one of the next uh, steps of the wizard. So for the activity model, the default model is B dot, but we also have other models available. 
and one of the models is for instance the Pitzer model which is uh, characteristic of a uh, formation of high salinity I'm going to stick to B dot at the moment uh, then going back up the um, history this option is already checked and I'm going to leave it to leave it checked in uh, the hysteresis option is of course used for modeling hysteresis of the gas relative permeability curve to enable modeling of uh, trapping of residual gas saturation and again there will be another section of the wizard in which we can control the details of how this hysteresis modeling will be performed by the simulator at the bottom like I said I'm going to activate the most possible options so I'm going to activate water vaporization as well uh, we can see that the water vaporization comes up with two additional parameters which are default in here but can be changed if needed these are th two uh, thresholds the first one is the minimum water saturation below which all the geochemical reactions are automatically shut off by gem the second threshold here is a threshold on the H2O vaporization process itself. It's the minimum saturation of the water below which water, uh, water vaporization will be stopped. And I'm going also to set the uh, thermal option on to model thermal effects as well. So I can move on to the next section of the wizard, which is going to be about geochemistry data input so there are different ways you can uh, work with this window one is to use the custom option which i'm going to describe today um, other possible options are in this drop down list you can select some predefined defaults for geochemistry modeling and some of them are specific to some types of rocks so there are defaults for classics and defaults for carbonates that you can use if this these cases apply to your uh, scenario i'm going to focus on custom where everything can be customized so the first option is to choose the component for salinity and i've got the sodium ion as a possibility so i'm going to check this one and then i'm going to check other options related to which reactions do I need to model which reactions are characteristic of my aqueous environment this is a, an information, a piece of information that can come from the laboratory and uh, the wizard allows you to select some reactions based on some predefined databases which the wizard connects to um, one of them is the FreeQC database and we also have the Wallery database as a default so I'm going to go for the Wallery database and I'm going to add some typical aqueous reactions so the reaction of CO2 with water for instance then uh, I have the uh, reaction of uh, CO3 minus plus, plus H plus and uh, the water dissociation reaction these uh, reactions in uh, blue are the aqueous phase reactions and these are modeled by way of uh, equilibrium reaction modeling if you go to the bottom section the uh, green uh, the yellow section will be about the modeling of uh, mineral precipitation and dissolution reactions i'm going to consider three minerals in this model calcite dolomite and anorthite so I can find the reaction for calcite in here I should also be able to find the dolomite reaction which is here but as you can see I don't have the anorthite reaction and the reason is because this is only a subset of the whole Wallery database set of reactions for minerals so if I want to see a reaction which I can't find on the subset list selected here I can check the option show all reactions and now when I go back to the same drop down list I can see that this is far longer than it was previously and uh, now I can see my anorthite reaction which I'm going to select I'm going to resize the window for better viewing 
And you can see now that if we consider one of the reactions, for instance, a calcite reaction, this is the minimum set of data needed to model the reaction. It consists of the uh, reactive surface area of the mineral, the activation energy, and the log 10 of the reaction rate. These numbers are copied out of the database that we worked with. They can be changed, so everything can be overwritten here. If your laboratory measured these parameters and is able to give you alternative reliable data for these properties. As you can see, these parameters are the input data for a rate dependent modeling of the reaction. So these reactions will be modeled by GEM using the transition state theory model, which is a rate dependent model. Additionally, in GEM 2021, we can model mineral reactions as equilibrium reactions. Then at the bottom here, based on the selections I've made at the top, I will have to input data to characterize the original formation water. So the pH of the water, which will be for instance six in this case, and then based on my laboratory analysis, I should be able to find original concentration of these uh, ions, which I'm going to input data for. You can see here that for aluminum and SiO2, I've already got data filled in by the wizard. This is recommended data. You can over override this if the laboratory was able to measure the concentration of these uh, ions or molecules as well. And at the bottom, we've got the initial volume fraction of the minerals that we selected. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, fill in data for the original fraction of these uh, minerals. I also want to highlight here this option. I'm working in the assumption of uh, a neutral environment, but you could change this to acid or base. And what this would do is the reactions, some of the reactions at least, uh, would be uh, changed in terms of the input parameters to be more uh, appropriate for an acidic or a basic environment. So I'm just going to go to the next level. And here we have the option add new component for H2O and uh, this is already checked in as I expected and this is because we selected the option water vaporization at the beginning which means that the wizard will update the PVT section of uh, Builder to add H2O as a component in the PVT section which is a necessary requirement for modeling water vaporization. Going to the next section, we basically get to the area where we set up the hysteresis model. The hysteresis is based on a rock type. The rock type needs to be selected here. In this case, I only have one rock type. And then I'll go to the next level of the wizard. At this step, we select the hysteresis model of interest for instance, linear hysteresis. Amongst the linear hysteresis models, we can have various models taken from literature. The land model is, for instance, a popular model for hysteresis. It requires the definition of a maximum residual gas saturation, which is calculated internally by default. That will be the midpoint between SG critical and one minus SW conic or it can be set up by the user. For instance, this could be 0.3, 30% gas. And uh, as we do that, we can see that the original set of curves, which are the uh, blue curve and the red curve are shown on this plot, along with a number of uh, scanning curves, as you can see here, the scanning curves are the hi imbibition hysteresis curves, which will be used by GEM during the simulation. We can see 
more curves than we are showing here by increasing the number number of curves for the plot so for instance if i go for 20 curves the plot will become much busier with more scanning curves being shown um, on the display here let's go to the next uh, section which takes me to the last step of the wizard we can see here the composition of the injected um, fluid in this case we want to inject a gaseous component so we are not looking at uh, components for water injectors so i'm just going to scroll to the bottom and uh, make sure that the co2 injection gas mole fraction is set to 100 percent which will mean 100 percent co2 and then uh, on the list of wells like i only have one well here but there could be more than one I can check the option CO2 inject the, the well name CO2 injector, which will update the uh, composition of the injected fluid for this specific well. I'm going to click finish. This message will pop up warning me that the well has been updated at this date, which is the date the well is defined. So I can accept this change by clicking OK. And at this point, I can just save this model as my CCS case. And this is a model which now contains all the desired tracking mechanisms for a CO2 injector in injection into an aquifer. And uh, this model is now ready for uh, submission to the GEM simulator. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and I will be happy to take any questions about this uh, workflow. Thank you very much.